facility shining. Please consider signing up for a week in either July or August to add your name to the, to the big calendar hanging on the coat rack in the West Lobby. <coughs> Thank you. The display of the sanctuary is for everyone to use. You are invited to reflect on the people who have been significant in your faith life. You may wish to name friends, family members, mentors, pastors, public figures, strange strangers, or anyone who has had a lasting impact on your faith. The table at the, by the candle table has paper and markers to use. The names will be added to the display. We have one birthday this week. Miss Amy Scroggins will celebrate tomorrow. Happy birthday, Amy. And uh, then Mary and uh, Bob Fisher, Mary Jane Fisher, will celebrate their anniversary on Tuesday. Wow, 37. Wow, Congratulations. Bob, you did it. Me too. That's awesome. Um, you'll all see a little slip of paper in your bulletin. Uh, one of the things the session has been working hard on the past couple months is finding ways for us to get our mission work back up and going post-COVID. So we ask that you would take a look at the list that we have provided, um, write your name, circle your, your options on there, and uh, put it in the offering plate on your way out. And if you have any ideas for other mission projects, please write those on there. Um, this is not the be-all, end-all list of absolutely everything. But I hope that you will think about what God is leaving us to do, and we can work and serve together. Um, I also want to say that since COVID cases are on the rise, I hope that everyone that wants to wear a mask feels comfortable doing so. Everyone who doesn't want to wear a mask, I hope you're comfortable. I just want everybody to be comfortable with whatever you choose, and we love you all just the same. <laughs> Now let us have time for a silent prayer to start our worship.
We are a praying church. If any of you have prayer requests, joys, or concerns to share with the congregation, please, uh, and they'll also be put on the weekly prayer list, please write them on the note card located in the back of each pew. We'll come around and pick them up following the sermon. Now please stand and let's join together in the, first, in the opening song.
steadfast God, we confess that we aren't always eager to do the right thing. Standing up for what we believe comes with consequences that aren't always pleasant. We face ridicule or worse, persecution. Sometimes we risk our very lives or at least our livelihoods. Your love, however, never gives up on us. You seem to know our strength better than we ourselves. Forgive us when we fail to listen to you, when we fail to follow in your way. Forgive us when we sell out to the highest bidder without giving a thought to the consequences. With hope we pray. Amen. God's love and mercy never ends but is new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Beloved, believe the good news. In Christ we are forgiven and set free. We stand as you are able, as we sing. Forsake the work from your hands. The second reading is from Daniel 3, verses 1 through 30. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed, 
You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the fairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you should fall down and worship the statue that I have made. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage that Shadrach, against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound, into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselor, Was it not three men we threw into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not scorched, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command 
and yielded up their bodies, rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. <coughs> Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was asked if God was on his side. Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side, said the president. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. Apparently, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego agreed. They strove to be on God's side. They trusted in God and remained faithful. But they didn't assume that God would act in a certain way. There was no quid pro quo in their relationship. They acted faithfully but not because of what they expected God to do. They chose to obey the first commandment, to put nothing before God. The basis of the relationship between God and the Jews was the saving acts God had already performed long ago. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego responded to the grace of God already experienced. They made a choice to side with God, regardless of whether God saved them in the way they hoped. The story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is probably a folk tale that was passed down orally through the Israelites. Folk tales would be told by ordinary folks to delight their listeners, sometimes with the details changing as they were told and retold. These stories became an important way of passing along information, knowledge, and history. Folk tales also have the ability to help us through difficult times. In this tale, we have repeated and exaggerated descriptions of court officials and musical instruments, probably meant to make us chuckle. The actions and decisions of the king are a bit ridiculous, not what we would expect from a wise ruler. His ego is out of control, evident in the huge statue that he made. And besides that, he expects everyone to bow down and worship this ridiculous statue. The setting for this book tale is Babylon during the time of exile. Our heroes have been removed from their homeland and are living in Babylon under foreign domination. The Jews in the stories in the book of Daniel have no power except through whatever gifts they may receive from God and their faith in the power of God to deliver them. But the book of Daniel is written many years after the exile, between 333 and 160 BCE. The Hellenistic culture was spreading throughout the world. The Jews struggled to maintain their Jewish identity. This was also another unusually tumultuous time in Israel's history. Israel was again living under foreign domination, this time in their own land, and the ruler is particularly vicious. These folk tales were gathered and compiled to bring hope, <coughs> inspire courage, and give perspective to their struggles. How does the Jew survive in the larger non-Jewish world? In the story of Esther, the answer is that the Jew assimilates into the culture, but never forgets that she's a Jew. At the right moment, she asserts her identity for the benefit of her people. How does one get along when the whole world is ignorant of or opposed to your culture? For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the answer is radical obedience to God, separating oneself from society's customs, and way of life and relying on God's strength. The ultimate goal is to survive and pass the faith on to another generation. Both Esther and Daniel show us ways that Jews and Judaism have survived through the long centuries since the fall of Jerusalem. So let's tell the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego together. Maybe we'll learn something and have a little fun too. First, we'll practice the parts together. So you can get your sheets if you want to follow along. When you hear Nebuchadnezzar, you will say, I'm so great. Let's try that. I'm, I'm so, so great. great. 
When you hear the word man, you will play your instruments, right? When you hear furnace of blazing fire, you will crinkle your red paper. And when you hear our heroes' names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will say, We worship only God. God. All right, let's hear. <clears throat> the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace of blazing fire. A long time ago in Babylon, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. I'm, I'm so, so great. great. He built a statue that was nine feet high and nine feet wide and made of gold. Then he sent for all the leaders from around his kingdom to come to the dedication of the statue. When all the officials of the provinces arrived at the statue, Nebuchadnezzar I'm so great. gave a command for everyone to fall down and worship the golden statue when they hear the band. That sounded like a party, but hold on. What would happen if you'd rather not worship the golden statue? Well, Nebuchadnezzar I'm so great. announced that those who did not fall down and worship the statue would be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. That was quite an incentive, so when the people heard the band, they fell down and worshipped the golden statue that the king had set up. But there were some people in the kingdom who despised the Jews because they refused to assimilate into their culture. These people, the Chaldeans, seized this opportunity to hurt the Jews. They approached King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm so great, and accused three Jews who held leadership positions in the kingdom of disobeying the king's command. Then Nebuchadnezzar, I'm so great, was furious. He called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We, we worship only God. To be brought to him. Now they knew the law that God had given the Jews. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. Worship only the Lord your God. Nebuchadnezzar, I'm so great, asked them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We worship only God. That you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up. Here's your chance to save yourself. When you hear the band, you must fall down and worship the golden statue that I have made. Otherwise, you will be tossed in the furnace of blazing fire. Then the king directed a dare to the men, but also toward God. He asked, who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, We worship only God. Answered the king, We will not present a defense. God may deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. But if not, we still will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Well, that enraged King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm so great. His face became distorted and he had the furnace of blazing fire heated to seven times more than usual. He ordered some of his strongest guards to bind them and throw them in the furnace of blazing fire. The men who threw the men were killed because the flames were so hot. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we, we worship only, only God, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Astonished by what he saw, the king jumped up and asked his counselors if they had thrown only three men in the fire. They answered, yes, only three. But he declared that he saw four in the furnace of blazing fire. And the fourth looked like a divine being. He was walking with them, and they were not hurt. King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm so great, called to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we, we worship, worship only, only God, and asked them to come out of the furnace of blazing, blazing fire. He addressed them as servants of the Most High God. When they came out of the furnace of blazing fire, the leaders in the kingdom took a good look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We, we worship, worship only, only God. God. They noticed that they were not burned, the hair on their heads was not singed, 
Their clothes were not scorched, and they didn't even smell like smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm, I'm so great, had an immediate change of heart. He acknowledged that God, the Lord God, the Lord Most High, had delivered the three men. He was amazed by God's power and made a new command forbidding anyone in his realm to talk trash about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We, we worship only God. God. He promised that there would be terrible consequences if they did. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm so great, promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We, we worship only God. In the land of Babylon. As our story comes to an end, we remember that three were tested and refused to bow. Three were given a choice and did not waver. Three chose obedience to God no matter the cost. But four walked in the furnace unharmed. This folk tale of three Jewish heroes also informs our lives. We may not be living under an oppressive regime, but we make decisions every day about who or what we will worship. Will we put our trust in power, money, people, or things? Will we bow down thoughtlessly to a culture that tells us to care only about ourselves? Or will we refuse to be frightened or pressured into giving our allegiance to things that are opposed to God? We can put our faith in God alone. We can choose to side with God, regardless of whether God acts in the way we want him to. We can choose to be on God's side, because God is always <laughs> right. And through it all, we do not walk alone. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
People of God, remember that living life with open hands is an outward expression of God's inner work. May we be people of open hands and not clenched fists as we offer our best to God. Generous God, we are grateful for your open hands towards us. Accept the gifts we offer today as we seek to follow Christ's footsteps. As we give, may we receive joy in the giving, strength for the journey, and a living sense of your steadfast love and faithfulness. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Please sing uh, hymn number 698. Mm -hmm. understanding to the voices of our neighbors so that we may learn to live as one. God of new life, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for loved ones. Remember those who are struggling and suffering this day. Take them in your arms and heal them. Renew and restore their lives. We pray especially for Michael Curry. Crystal Greer, Mary Lee, Paula Penn, Monica and Nathan Short, Jerry Woods, Mark Carter, Barbie Mellinger, Amy Scroggins, Wendell Phillips, Randy Nash, Melinda Hacker, Bob Fisher, Beth Hall, Stephen and Elizabeth Pollard, Jerry Dean Densmore, the people of Ukraine, our country and leaders, our church. Remember also those whose names are not spoken aloud but within our hearts and are known to you. God of new life, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All this we ask of you, Lord God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing hymn number 691. Thank you. Thank you. 